and good morning to you. Great day to be alive. Tell somebody that that you're with right now. It's a great day to be alive. There's no one else in here. But you can tell someone if you're with them. Tell them it's a great day to be alive. And also, before we get started, um, if you could take a moment and share uh, this live feed right now with anybody that you're thinking of or uh, maybe just you share it to your wall, however you want to do that. Uh, we will also have it available on YouTube after the service. So if you're watching right now on YouTube, you can hit uh, like or subscribe or you can um, also share this along with somebody else. We appreciate you spreading uh, the word of what's taking place here today. And let's open up with prayer. God, we thank you for today. We just give you our mind, our heart, our spirit. God, we ask for your leading in our lives. God, we ask for your way to be the way that we seek, Lord. We just give you the glory, the honor, the praise today. God, we want to lift you up. We want to um, honor you in the way that we live. We want to honor you, God, in what we say, what we do. And we also want to be a light to this world like you've called us to be. And so, God, as we lift you up today, God, let your name, God, be higher than any other name in all that we do in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, great to see you guys on here today and looking forward to our time here together. Get a worship um, right off the bat here. And if you don't know the song, the words are going to be on the screen. And we're just going to sing and then we'll go into a time of sharing the word. So if you're new here with us today, we invite you to join in and sing, uh, stay, stay uh, connected with us. If you would like to stay connected with us and hear from us um, through email or text, we would love to uh, have you fill out the contact form on our website at alivechurchnyc.com. So if you're here with us today, we'd love to hear from you and we're gonna worship. Thank you, Jesus. God, ready to lift you up, God. There's no place we would rather be, Lord God, but in your presence, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. No place I'd rather be. No place I'd rather be. No place I'd rather be. Oh 
shake, or if you are uh, married, you can give them a holy kiss if you'd like to greet them this morning. But uh, again, if you're with us, thank you for being here. I'm looking forward to uh, diving into the Word just here right after we uh, take a moment to receive our tithes and offerings, and um, just want to uh, read a scripture here. It's about giving our first fruits. So the top there, giving my first fruits. Proverbs 3, 9 through 10 says this, Honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of all your increase. So your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. And the prayer that we are praying out of this scripture um, is right here. Lord, I want you to be first in my life. I bring my tithes to you, the first 10%, the first fruits of my increase. You promise in your word to fill my resources and meet my needs. Today, I honor you, Lord. I bring something from my possessions. I bring the first fruits of my increase. I start this first Sunday of the month by honoring you, Lord, with my tithes and trust you to provide all that I need. Amen. And if you're giving today, you can give online at alivechurchnyc.com slash give, or you can mail in your uh, giving by requesting the mailing address at connect at alivechurchnyc.com. I just want to pray for you as you give today. God, we just thank you for the opportunity to give, to give you our first fruits, God, to give you that first 10% of what we are increased with. God, we know that we could try to hang on to it all and try to make it all work out for ourselves, but you already know what we need before we ask. And so we put you first in our giving. We put you first in our finances, God, so that God, all that you provide for us above and beyond, we can ask, think, or imagine God comes from your hand and not us forcing something. Lord God, we just give to you freely today. God, use it for your glory, in Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. Well, today we're going to uh, continue on our series called Relating. Um, the slide here, you can write that down if you'd like. If you um, are taking notes today, write down Relating. And we've kind of done something different because, you know, the month of February, a lot of times we talk about relationships and we start off with talking about romantic relationships or friendships and um, which is amazing and good and we all need direction in that. And the word has a lot to say about how we treat each other and how to pursue all that God has for you in healthy relationships. But we, we started off by talking about relating to God. And another area we want to go to today is relating to authority, relating to authority. And already I can feel the cringe in some of you. Um, authority, the, the subject of authority is not very popular in our culture, in our time, in our, in our generation. It, it's probably never been that popular of a subject uh, because our flesh rises up to sometimes go against 
authority. And especially in our modern society, in our current culture, uh, most of us as people want to just be free spirits, do what we want, be who we want to be, um, and don't want, anyone's telling, don't want anyone telling us what to do. So what are we going to talk about, about relating to authority? Aren't we supposed to, if we don't like what authority has to say, like just not do it or rise up against it? Um, the Bible has some things to say about what we do and how we relate to authority. And so we want to look at that in, um, in this sermon today. And relating again is the sermon title. And we're talking about relating to authority. I believe 100% because the Bible says it, that if we learn to um, put our self aside for a minute and really hear what the Bible has to say on the topic of authority, I believe it will bless our life, not hold us back. A lot of times we think authority will hold us back. We think that uh, what they're telling us to do, whether it's, um, uh, whether it's government, whether it's teachers, whether it's uh, bosses, whether it's parents, whatever it might be, you might think, man, I'm just being held back by uh, listening to my boss or doing this or doing that. There are times of transition to um, come out of maybe a certain person who's an authority of your life and into another. But how often um, does that actually change? Not that often. God kind of sets things into place for us and sets people into authority in our life. And I want you for a moment to think about who God has set into your life as, as an authority. Think about it. A lot of times that question is posed in this way. Who do you let speak into your life? And I realize I even have to change the way I pose that question because a lot of times as believers, as pastors, we ask people, hey, who do you let speak into your life? And the heart of that question is, um, who has God set into your life to speak into your life? But a lot of times we pose it as, who do you let speak into your life? And if we just choose all the time who we let speak into our life, we're just going to pick the people that say what we want them to say, rather than the people that God has set in our life to say what they need to say to help direct us, guide us, mold us, shape us. And many times we get confused as believers thinking, I can allow who I want to speak into my life and that's going to make me feel good and strong and encouraged. When in fact, there are authorities set by God that we need to lend our ear to at times. And if they're operating in the way that God has called them to operate, they will be more of a blessing to us than we can imagine. And again, I, I stress that point that if they were operating in the way that God has intended, there will be a blessing as we learn to relate to authority in a healthier way. Obviously, our culture, our time that we're living in um, is very, very tense when it comes to talking about authority. Uh, how do we be counterculture, um, but not just kind of mowed over by, um, you know, the thoughts of the day or the authorities of the day? I, I think the Word of God, and I know the Word of God is going to help us navigate through this because we all need guidance when it comes to how do we relate to the authorities in our society, in our life, in our families, and in our church, in all that God has set in motion. How do we relate the, to that? Because the reality is, is that we never had to learn an attitude to, um, to, say like, hey, I don't want you to tell me what to do. It's ingrained in us. Adam and Eve displayed it. Um, sorry, I kind of spit there. Adam and Eve displayed it in the garden when they challenged God's authority in what was best for them to do and for them not to eat the fruit. And they challenged it by being swayed by the serpent saying, God doesn't really not say to not eat this. He, he knows 
that you'll be like him if you eat this. And so they were swayed by another voice who shouldn't have been an authority in their life. And they did the wrong thing. So as Adam and Eve started that attitude, we have the same attitude ingrained in our flesh. But part of God's restoration in our life involves bringing us back into a right relationship to authority. And the reason that we started with God in our relating series, started to how we relate to God, how we can relate better to God, and now to how we can relate to authority is because I think sometimes we leave this one out thinking that our life will just come into alignment um, if God is speaking to us and we have our friends who are speaking what we want them to say to us and we can kind of play um, however we want. We can make up the rules. We can get the friends that we want that help us make up the rules, the rules that we like, and then thinking that, man, I just I want to please God and I love God, but then we kind of leave out the authorities that God has set in our life. And maybe not all of us do that. Maybe there's some of us who are very um, bent on keeping the rules and making sure we hear from authority and living perfect lives. No, no, there's no one living a perfect life. Jesus was the only one who lived a sinless, perfect life. But part of God's restoration in our life is to restore how we relate to authority. Because God has established certain levels, various levels of authority in our lives. And many of the problems that we face in life have to do with an improper relationship to these authorities. If we are to have a successful human relationship, it is critical that we allow God to assist us in getting this aspect of our lives into biblical order, not what the culture says, not what we want, not what our flesh says, but into biblical order because biblical order is the word of God. So we want to look at Romans 13 verse 1. You can open up your Bible or use your phone however you'd like. And I realize this is, a, this is a tough subject for a lot of us. But as believers, if we don't address the tough, tough subjects, especially in our day, right now, our culture right now, then we're going to miss out on how to be the people of God in these times and in these scenarios that we're living out. You know, many people don't, you know, don't want anyone telling them what to do. Many people want to say, well, I'm my own woman. I'm my own man. I can make my own decisions. I can do things the way I want. I've, I've, I'm enough in who I am. And, and that's all self-building and builds up yourself maybe to a confident level. But the reality is, is we need each other. We need voices of authority in our life, voices of right authority. And I'm not saying that all authority is perfect, but we're not to um, expect perfection from the authorities placed in our life because we're not perfect people either. And if you want to operate in the authority that God has given you as a believer, then we need to realize how to operate under the authority God has put over us as a believer. We're going to be more effective if we can learn to submit properly to what God has placed in our life. Romans 13, um, 1 and 2 says this. Let every person be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except from God, and those that exist have been instituted by God. They've been instituted by God. Therefore, whoever resists the authorities resists what God has appointed. And those who resist will incur judgment. We don't want to incur judgment upon ourselves. We want to be those who respond to what God has appointed. And I realize this, this message may not make sense to our flesh. This message may not make sense to our flesh, but that's why we need the Spirit of God to open up our ears, open up our eyes and our hearts. And I just want to pray that right now. God, open up our eyes 
spiritual eyes, open up our heart, open up our ears, our mind to hear what your spirit would say. Because in our flesh, God, we cannot hear what the spirit is saying. But in our spirit, we can tune in right now to what you want to say. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. If you are all for hearing what God wants to say today, give me some double woo pans in the comments. And we would love to see that. I'm going to I'm gonna do that myself. All right. Some double whoop. Actually, double. Triple. There we go. All right. So what is authority? We should look at that first. Authority is the right to command or act, the right to govern or rule, and the right to exercise power. Authority is the right and capacity of an individual to perform what he wills and who by virtue of his position or office can command obedience. Now again, that probably brings up a bunch of questions for some of us who maybe are struggling to listen with our, our spirit because we say, I don't want anyone to command or act that they can command over me, or I don't want anyone to govern me. I don't want anyone to have authority over me. I am my own authority. I say what I'm going to do. And again, this doesn't give anyone authority to trample over you, to um, abuse you, to be ruthless to you. But um, in, in, our, in our culture and society, and even in our time and in our day, there are many leaders, many, um, many authorities who, who make huge mistakes and overstep their bounds. And I'm not condoning anything that would overstep bounds or or be abusive, or be uh, harassing, or be um, in, in any way, shape, or form not godly authority. But the reality is God has set people into authority. And many times we make fun and make joke of when authority fails or falls because it makes us feel a little bit more exceptional. Like, I wouldn't do that if I was him or her. And my heart today is that we would not be people that, you know, in, in our culture has designed it for us to make fun of parents when we don't like what they have to say, to make fun of teachers who don't, when we don't like what they have to say, to make fun of government officials, presidents, uh, governors, mayors, all, it, it just breeds to make fun of and to poke fun of or to um, throw, throw darts at whoever fails or what we don't like. And all of a sudden, we just become those who just kind of run like the rest of the world and make fun of who we want to make fun of. And, and, um, and, and in that process, we begin to get desensitized to what true authority is. We think an authority is just someone that we just watch until they um, fail or they do something we don't like and then we just make comments. We make comments. We make our own comments and we say how it should be done and how we want it done. Rather than spending time praying for the authorities to, to operate the way God intended them to. When was the last time any of us, myself included, prayed for an authority figure in our nation, in our life, to operate the way God intended them to? Rather than, oh, I don't like him, I don't like her. I don't like the party they're with. I don't like this, the stance they take on this issue. We have a lot of comments, but we rarely come to a place of saying, Lord, help him, help her, help these authorities operate the way you intended them to because it will be better for everyone. That's the message today. Goodbye. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. But I'm serious at the same time. It's real. We need to pray for the authorities to operate in the way God intended them. So what is authority? It's the right to command or act, the right to govern or rule, the right to exercise power. Authority is the right and capacity of an individual to perform what he wills and who, by virtue of his position or office, can command obedience. The Bible clearly teaches us that all authority is from God, but that God has delegated his authority to other humans 
with whom we must learn to properly relate to. If we don't learn to relate to authority, we're either going to be fearful, we're either going to be um, gullible, or we're going to be those that just kind of make fun of everything. We don't want to be gullible. We don't want to be fearful. We don't want to be um, just unrelatable to the authorities that are in our lives. It's already going deep. I can tell the wheels are spinning for some people. Like, how, how do we get to this place? Because we are so far off. Even in our, um, in our mindset of believers, of healthy authority. Because authority does fail. Politicians, pastors, people all fail. Because we're all human. But the reality is, is God has a plan. And if we trust his plan and why he's put authority into place, then we will learn to live in favor, not only with God, but with men who are in authority, women who are in authority. So what's the purpose of authority? We looked at what authority is. What is the purpose? God has placed authorities in our lives for several reasons. Several reasons. We'll go through a couple of them. The first thing, if you're taking notes, is authority has been placed by God to help us properly relate to God. And you say, what? That doesn't make sense. To our flesh, it doesn't make sense. But open up your spirit ears for a moment. At times, it's difficult to relate to a God that we can't see. At times, it's difficult to understand the ways of God when we read the Bible and say, man, God, that seems a little violent. Or that seems a little weird. Or that seems a little off. So even in our best moment, there are times that we question, God, why did you do it that way? How many times have we questioned authority? Why are they doing things that, that way? Why, are, why would they say things like that? That seems off. That seems a little violent. That seems a little ruthless. That seems a little weak. That seems a little wrong. And we start to question and challenge things, but we don't even realize that's what we do with God many times. And it's okay to have a question, but we shouldn't challenge without wanting God to help uh, us restore a healthy perspective of why he's put authority into place. God's appointed authorities in our lives are functioning in a sense as God if they had in if they operate in their intended way that God placed them in our life. Now, authority is not God. But they're functioning as, a, as someone to help guide the way if they're functioning in the way God intended them to function. Authority also has been given by God to help us develop Wisdom, understanding, knowledge, and character. And we look at Luke 2, 49, 52, says even Jesus shows that even Jesus grew in these areas as he submitted to his earthly parents. And so I want to read this, Luke 2, 49, it's your Bible or your phone, Luke 2, 49 through 52 says, and he said to them, why did you seek me? Jesus is talking to his parents here. Because they couldn't find him. They left the city and they realized he wasn't with the caravan of people coming. So they ran back to Jerusalem and they found him. And he says this. He said to them, why did you seek me? Did you not know that I must be about my father's business? But they did not understand the statement which he spoke to them. Then he went down with them. So he realized, I, I, I should be here doing what God wants me to do, but he went down with them, so he submitted to his parents and came to Nazareth and was subject to them. So even though he was 100% God and 100% man, Jesus was, he submitted to his earthly parents. He was subject to them, but his mother kept all these things in her heart, and Jesus increased in wisdom and stature, 
and in favor with God and man. Notice as he was subject to them, he increased in wisdom and stature and favor with God and man. If you feel like you have lost your way when it comes to being a wise person, Look at ways you can be subject to what God has put in your life, the authorities God has put in your life, and learn from it. Don't just always, uh, you don't always have to agree with it, but learn from it and learn how to navigate it and ask for wisdom in those scenarios. The reason Daniel and Joseph were so influential in the most, um, pagan cultures of their day, Joseph in Egypt and then Daniel in Babylon, the reason they were so influential is because they learned how to be wise and how they submitted to the authorities at uh, in place of their day. Daniel, known for wisdom above and beyond his peers. Joseph, known for to have visions and dreams and to share that wisdom that God had given him so that the country would not fade out and die out in famine. God gave them wisdom because they learned to not just challenge authority, but to be challenged by the situation. Daniel was challenged to either eat the king's food, and he didn't rise up and say, your food's horrible. I'm not going to do this. You can't tell me what to do. I'm not going to eat your steak. I'm not going to eat this plate that you put in front of me. I'm going to do my own thing. How long would he have lasted in Babylon if he would have had that attitude? Not very long. But he decided instead of challenging in a way that would be rude or unsubmissive, he, he challenged himself and he said, can we do this? I, I, I want to challenge myself. If I eat vegetables and fruit for the next 10 days and I, and I look healthy and better than the people who are eating the king's food, can I continue on this diet? But if I don't, then fine, I'll, I'll submit to your way. He had enough trust in God to know that God would come through and allow him, as he challenged himself, to come under the authority that God would help him, God would guide him, God would lead him. And in that way, he actually was able to do what God wanted him to do. And it worked out that the king and the subjects who were feeding them the food looked at them and saw, wow, they are 10 times wiser, 10 times better, 10 times more knowledgeable than the people around them. If we take opportunity to look at things as like, I'm not just going to challenge this, but I'm going to say, how can I be challenged by this? And what can I do in a, in, with wisdom to not just give in to culture, to not just give in to what they're saying I need to do or consume. But if I have a, a God thought like Daniel had in the middle of his, his captivity in Babylon, just think how much more effective we would be than just spouting off our comments on Facebook, spouting off our comments on, this is what I don't like, this is what I like. Some things aren't supposed to be just put out in public all the time on, on our social media. Sometimes we need to have wisdom of how we approach things. We need to relate to authority in a way that says, God, help me grow in my wisdom. Like Jesus, help me grow in wisdom and stature and to earn favor first with God and then with the men and the women in authority that God has placed over me. If we operated in wisdom, God grows us in stature and in favor. That right there would be, we, we, we could see the world change if we were more like the, the Daniels and the Josephs who didn't just tear down the, the leaders and the culture around them. They learned how to be 
vessels who were wise, put God first, asked for his direction and leading of how to navigate. I think as believers, we could learn a lot and we could dive into those, those stories a lot more, but for time's sake, we won't today. But we would be so much more effective and in the will of God and seeing people's lives turn around if we didn't just kind of spout off what we want to about the authorities in our life or spout off about this politician or that or instead if we first prayed that they would operate in the way God intended them to and that if we would submit ourselves to challenge ourselves to to respond with wisdom and to grow in stature and favor with God and the people around us, we'd be so much more effective. God wants to use you to influence. And yes, sometimes, sometimes, I mean, very rarely is it the right thing to do to just stand up and say, I'm not going to do that. That's not what I'm supposed to do. That's not what the Word of God says. It rarely in the Bible is that even a right thing to do. The, the prophets had to fight, I know, uh, the prophets of Baal. The, they had to say things um, that, that were what God wanted to say to the people. But many times, even Jesus just kept quiet and asked for wisdom. Kept quiet and did the will of the Father. Not just wrote it down or 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 wanted to do it, he actually did it. And I hope this is, is making sense to our spirit today. Because a lot of times, sometimes it won't make sense to our flesh when it's so counter to what our flesh wants to do. Our flesh wants to rise up. Our flesh wants to say, I'm not listening to anybody. They're not telling me what to do. They're not telling me how to live. I, I don't agree with them. I don't I don't want to do what they're telling me to do. But the reality is, is God has placed all authority. Are they all operating as God intended them to? Absolutely not. We're, we're fallen in our humanity. But can we show wisdom in how we relate to authority? Yes. Can we grow in our wisdom? Can we grow in, our, in, in, in how we approach this whole a uh, very controversial um, time that we're in when it comes to authorities and who's got authority and who should have authority and all the conversations. We need to approach it with wisdom and grow in stature. Know that we have God on our side and that even if we feel like we're losing at times, that God has the answer because he wins. A lot of times we say, well, we win. We win in the end. Well, actually, he wins. And if we're on his team, then yes, we win. And so we want to have wisdom. We want to um, grow in our influence and stature and earn favor with God and men and not just become um, someone who says, you know, I. We, we just have to fight authority. We just have to rise up against authority. Let's be wise in how we approach things. Not weak, but wise. Amen? Amen. Well, I got hardly anywhere on the notes that I have today, but I think that that's a good place to, to stop and pray and to ask God for wisdom, that we would grow in wisdom. We'd increase in wisdom. We'd increase in our stature and influence and in favor with God and with the, the God-given authorities that he's put in our life. Because he's put authority in our life for a purpose. And we're going to continue on in this, this vein for uh, several Sundays. Because it's so important, especially now. Especially now, because, because the Bible says this. It says, let every person. It doesn't just say believers, but it says, let every person be subject to the governing authorities. For there's no authority except from God. Wow. Wow. That's mind-boggling right there. That God would even put into authorities people who are so fallen, who are so ruthless, who are around the world. You think about um, 
dictators. You think about um, different countries that have um, strict um, rulers. And you think about even our country in these last several years, how authority has been looked at and all the things that have happened to, to try to rise up and fight and, and fight against authority or fight against left side or right side. And it's so confusing. And so we have to we have to clear that all out and begin to look at the word. And so it's kind of a relearning. We have to relearn and gain wisdom and understanding and grow rather than just keep going down the path that the world keeps going down or else we'll be in a world of hurt and without answers and not know what to do because we haven't properly related to God and the authorities that he has put in our lives. And so I want to pray for you today, pray for myself today, because we all need help in this area of relating to authority. And I knew, I know when you saw the word relating, you thought I was going to talk about dating. Well, it was so far from that. And so I apologize if that was your hope, but I don't apologize because God wants us to relate wisely to authority. So God, we just come before you today, whether this is our first time even hearing a message on authority, um, or maybe we've heard about it before and we need a refresher course of how to relate to authority in a, in a way that is, that is driven by the wisdom of God, not driven by our own wants and desires. God, we just submit ourselves to you, the number one authority, so that we can learn how to relate to, how to even grasp wisdom and understanding and how to be influential um, in these times and seasons. God, we need many wise men and women of God to be, be influencers in this time and not just instigators and not just ones who come up with, God, all these, um, you know, um, uh, criticisms and, and, and fights to be had. But God, we want to be influencers and not so we're liked. Not so we are glorified, but so that you are glorified, that you are lifted up, and that your name, God, is, uh, is, is spread throughout our country and, uh, and around the world as the only God, as the only Savior, as the only way. And so give us wisdom of how to grow in this area of relating to authority. God, we desire to do things your way and to be a God-honoring woman or man of God and that we would realize we're not perfect, and we need help, and we need guidance, and we need direction. And so we look to you. We look to the people you've put in our life to speak into our life. And we don't just surround ourselves with people we want to hear from, but we ask you, show us the way, and let us walk in it. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen, amen. Well, God bless you. I know um, you might have a lot of questions or even thoughts about uh, this topic. And if, if you would like to reach out and, and chat or um, send some questions, we'd love to hear from you. You can email us at connectedalivechurchnyc.com or you can reach out um, through our various social media, Facebook, Instagram, um, and Twitter. Also, um, if you have my number, text me if you have a question or a thought about this subject. We want to hear uh, how it's impacting you. Or if you have any prayer requests, please, please, please send in prayer requests. We love to pray. And um, again, we just look forward to our times together, whether it's online or live. I know that it's such an interesting time that we're living in. We just keep trusting in God for the next steps. And so we love you. We're for you. God's for you. And we're praying for you, believing the best is yet to come for your life, not just in a fluffy, everything's fun way, but really the best is yet to come for you as you learn to submit to God's ways and grow in wisdom. And so God bless you. Have a great rest of your uh, weekend and we'll see you next Sunday.